inside, some that's uh, uh, listening on the uh, radio outside and uh, watching by video so uh, or Facebook Live. Good to have you here, whichever way you're joining us, and it's always a joy to be in the house of the Lord. What a good time to be saved. Amen. And we're just so grateful for this privilege. Remember some of our folks that have had surgery this week, that the Lord would help them in their recovery and be with them. Pray for them and their families. And we're so grateful for what the Lord has so done for us, how good he's been with us and helped us in these days. Before uh, we pray, we're going to begin a new series again today now. Uh, we're going to start a new series on things of importance. Things of importance. Uh, things that are important in life. So we're going to look at that. If you're turning in your Bible to the book of Jude, if you can find that in your Bible, it's the second to the last book in the Bible. So the book of Jude. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But remember all these things. Certainly pray for our nation. We're a nation that needs prayer. Lift it up before God. God can change it before dark. And we need to remember to pray and give him, uh, pour our hearts out to him. Let's go to God at this time. And we're going to pray and uh, see what God has in store for us. Our Father, we're very thankful and very grateful. Uh, thankful all that you have done for us. We pray, God, that you'd be with us and help us. We thank you, dear God, for this great day. And thank you, dear God, for this great hour. We pray, God, that you would certainly help us. We pray for those that need prayer today uh, that's uh, had surgeries and different things that's happened. We pray that you'd be with them. Our Father, thank you for all that you've done, how good you've been to us, and how that you've helped us, and God will give you praise and honor and glory. Be with the word. Help us, dear God, to preach in thy wonderful name that we pray. Amen. All right, it's good to be here. As I told you, I want you to turn to the book of Jude. The book of Jude. Now let me say, while you're turning. Tonight, we will be uh, having service time at 6 o'clock. The only difference is that we will be uh, on Facebook Live. And uh, so, turn in at 6, turn, uh, tune in at 6 o'clock. And if you're here and uh, you don't... Uh, uh, no, I didn't just go to Facebook, Cane Creek Baptist Church, Lake Lure. Be sure that's on there. And uh, then you, all you have to do is like it, and you can just tune right in and watch it live like you were right here in the building. So don't forget that. Also on Wednesday, and you, you pray that God would soon let us all get back together in his building. Uh, and we're grateful for that. In the book of Jude, the book of Jude, if you'll turn there, verse number three, here's what the Word of God says. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now let me say before we pray again, I'm preaching this morning on things of importance. Things of importance. And we're going to look at some things through the Bible that are certainly important. Our Father, again, we pray for the filling of the Spirit. Fill me, Heavenly Father, with thy Spirit, that so I might preach under the anointing of God. 
Dear Heavenly Father, you know that without the Spirit being on this message and being on this service, whichever way people are listening to it, it will be to no avail. And I pray that, dear God, that you'd use it to your glory. Help us in the Word of God that we might be able to explain and expound God's Word under the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I, the first message is this. The importance of earnestly contending for the faith. The importance of earnestly contending for the faith. Let's talk about this idea of what's important. We have found out since this year, early this year, some things that we found are that are very important. Who would have ever thought we would be doing some of the things that we're doing? Uh, I thought about this. We found out certainly to some, we found out the importance of buying and stockpiling toilet paper. Uh, who would have ever dreamed that that would have been a shortage? But things that are important, I'm using that as a, as a thought. But we found out that some of the most important things is what the Bible's always told us is important, and that is our relationship with God, isn't it? Amen. Our relationship with our family, Amen. that we need to... Uh, emphasize our family and draw closer if we can to, to those in our family. But that also comes true to the Word of God. There's some things that there's some things, ladies and gentlemen, worth dying for. Mm -hmm. And that's in the things of God's Word. The importance of of earnestly contending. Look at this idea of earnestly contending for the faith. The faith that is the body of truths revealed in the Word of God. And there's a whole bunch of them that's revealed in God's Word. But today we're going to look at some of these truths are worth contending for. That word contending in the Greek is the word epigonizma. And it's worth all of our effort. It's worth our our whole body effort. As I said, it's, there's some things worth dying for in the Word of God. But I want us to see the first thing that is that we ought to contend for. One of the first truths is concerning the Scripture. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, what a privilege it is to be able to hold a copy of the Word of God in your hand? Not every nation upon the face of this earth has that privilege. There's some people this morning that if you were to take this Bible and to to just throw it in a group of people, it would cause a riot. Why? Because so many people in some nations are starving for a copy of the Word of God. It would literally cause a riot for people trying to get just a few pages of the Word of God. But truths concerning the Scripture... One of the 
first truths of that we have with the Scripture is that this Bible that you and I have right here is these Scriptures are inspired. Amen. Take your Bible if you're inside or if you're outside or wherever, however how you're listening. Turn over to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17 and I want to show you this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for re correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect and that word means complete thoroughly furnished unto all good works did you know that there is at least nine things through the Bible, and I don't, I, I don't have all the, the scriptures, but I can get them. I just didn't have room enough to write them all down. Mm -hmm. And how we got talking about the verbal, the being inspired Word of God. There are nine ways that we got the, our Bible, the scriptures. I'm talking about the, the, the scripture. First of all, it was audible. It was audible. God spoke it. It was, it was audible. And man heard it. Secondly, was by angels. Number three was prophets. And number four was Jesus himself. In the New Testament, when he would quote the scriptures, many, much of it out of the book of Deuteronomy. One of my friends, we, we often hear, we all know the, the little song, the, the children's song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. He turns that around and says, Jesus loved me, loves me, for Deuteronomy tells me so. That's true. Now, Jesus himself spoke of the authenticity of the word of God. Then the apostles themselves. And even to Paul. Then it was through visions. And then also uh, it was through decrees. And uh, also uh, for uh, the other inspirational things that God gave. These things being that the verbal inspired, they're, they're verbal inspired word. The second thing about the scripture is that the scriptures are in error. Now that is a very important word. Over in the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter number thirty and verse five and six in the book of in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs thirty and then verses five and six in, in Proverbs. We'll look there. But we see in the Word, in Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6. Hold on just a second. 
My fingers will work. Every word of God is pure. Mm -hmm. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. They are in error. That means there is no error. In fact, it, it, it goes a little farther than that. It means there can never be an error. I'm not talking about a printer error that we, in the Bibles that you and I have today, they are made by, the, they're printed by machine. There could be a print error. But the verbal, the scripture itself, there is no error, and it can't be an error. When God said it's wrong, it's wrong. Amen. That's not an error. So, the scriptures, and these things are truths that are important. That are first, that they are inspired. Secondly, that they are in error. Over in the book of Psalms. And Psalms uh, 91 uh, talks about the scriptures. Uh, and talks about that how that they are in in error that they're, they're uh, God's word, and He tells us, and because He has set His love upon me, therefore will I deliver Him, and I will set Him on high because He hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer Him, and I will be with Him in trouble, and I will deliver Him. In, and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation he tells us in that psalm just read that whole psalm in Psalms 91 the scripture is above error there's no mistake in the Bible no mistake Number three, we find in the book of Matthew and verse number 24, in the book of Matthew, verse number, or chapter number 24, I mean, and verse number 35, in Matthew 24, 35, heaven, they're infallible, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. That word, that little word, those little words pass away. By the way, number one, that uh, is a, you're, they're changed, there's, there's a, uh, to be changed or will not, or will not, heaven and earth shall pass away. The Bible tells us these things. What does that mean? They're going to be changed. They're going to be changed. But my words, you see, in the, the Bible, if you read the Bible, that God's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Isn't that, isn't that right? Yes. But my words, His word, the word of God, which we believe that these 66 books in our Bible are verbally inspired, are inerrant, and infallible, and shall not pass away, or will not pass away. It's going to be forever. Now, not only do we see the truths concerning 
the scripture. And I'll tell you, that's a valuable thing. But the next thing I want us to see is this. We see the truths concerning the Savior. One of the first things that we see about our Lord is in the book of Luke. Well, it's actually in other Gospels, but, but especially in Luke. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 26. Look what the Bible says about our, first of all, about our Savior. His virgin birth, and that is real important. The virgin birth. To a virgin, this is in Luke 1, verse 27. To a virgin, to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now, I'm not going to read all of this. I'm going to read it through 35. I mean, that it goes through 35. I'm actually going to read verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come un upon thee. If you've got to block that in your Bible or underline that in your Bible. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, block that. That's important. That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, then all of these things, Mary begins to, uh, of course, ask questions and uh, Ask the Lord these things, but uh, all these different questions. But we know that the Bible tells her, tells her she asked questions. How can this be? When she's not, she hadn't known a man. In fact, uh, if you look that verse up and it's some of its Greek rendering. What Mary is actually uh, saying, Elizabeth quoted almost this, uh, uh, Zacharias, I mean. Zacharias thought he was too old to father a child. That was John the Baptist, by the way, who was six months older than our Lord. And Mary is asking basically the simple thing, she thought she is too young to have a child. Well, let me tell you what happened right there. What happened? There was no man involved. You, 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 the religion you belong to, if they're saying that there was a man involved, that's a lie. The Bible said that the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. What really happened, I looked this up, what really happened was when God created this earth, God was in existence. God wasn't created when the earth was created. There was always been God. And God just spoke and it happened. Now you say, well, where did he get his human quality? From his mother Mary. Because if it had been a man, if Joseph would have been involved, if it had been any other man involved, he'd have been no better than you and me, and he could not have been the son of God. The next thing is his virtuous life. 
Now, these are some things that are important. It's important that we, that we know these things and we defend these things. Look at Hebrews 4 and verse number 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities that come through his mother. Right? But was in all points tempted as we are. Block this in your Bible. Yet without sin. That's his father. He's God in the flesh. You see that? That's what he is. Yet let us, in verse 16, come, therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So we see the truths of this virtuous life that our Lord lived. Let me give you this. The next one is his vicar vicarious death. While we're right here in Hebrews, go back over to chapter number 2. In chapter number 2 and verse number 9, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Can I show you something, if I can find it right here? Do you know who controlled death up until the, until the cross? Satan. He did. If you read this book, he tells us, For in him to whom are all things, and by whom all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. And if you read in this chapter, this second chapter, you'll find that this power, that he, that's one of the things that he immediately defeated Satan. You know why? He took away the sting of death what he said. Oh sure we all die. We still die. We still all die. Unless we go in the rapture. But let me tell you this. The sting of death. It's, there's a difference between a Christian dying and a lost person dying. And I'm going to tell you this. You may die a martyr. But if you're not a Christian. Your dying a martyr is not going to make you go to heaven. That's the word of God. His vicarious death. He died for you and he for you and me. He took our place. He took away the sting of death for you and me. He tasted death for every every person. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing. Let's stay right in Hebrews because we're going to go right on into another verse. Is the, his vital blood. Did you know what's important? His blood. In Hebrews chapter number 9 and ver, uh, yeah, he, he chapter number 9. Hebrews 9 and verse number 4. 14 and 15, I think. How much more shall the blood of Christ, 
who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. For this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the, uh, under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Heritage. The vital blood. The blood's important, folks. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9 22, while we're right here. And almost all things are covered, almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Mm -hmm. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. That's why I had to go to the cross. Now, the next thing is his victorious resurrection. While you're turning, let me, let's go back to Acts 20. While you turn, uh, we're going to Luke, but I want us to look at one more scripture on this vital blood. In Acts 20 and verse number 28, we find there in the word of God, Take heed therefore unto yourselves to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which ye hath. Block this in your Bible. Purchase with his own blood. Very important. Now, going back to Luke chapter number 24 and we're going to see this victorious resurrection Luke chapter number 24 and then to hold on Luke 24 and verses 1 1 through uh, 6 there in the book of Luke the 24th chapter now upon the first day of the week very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. They found the stone rolled away from the scripture, sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Now we're talking about his victorious resurrection. If he hadn't have got up, he would have been no more than any other person. The graveyards are full of good men that had good intentions. But the difference, this was God. God in the, in the form of his son, of the son of God. And he got up on the third and appointed day as he said he would do it. Victorious. So we have victory. Victory. Now, look at this one. Right back in the book of Acts, his visible return. His visible return. Acts chapter number 2, I think it is. Acts 2 and verse 9 through 11. His visible return. It's uh, Acts 1, sorry. Acts 1. And he spoke these things while they beheld. He was taken up 
and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So we see the visible return. Now you and I didn't see it. But there were people there that did see it. Over in the book of Luke, I mean not Luke, but in Corinthians, the Bible tells us that there were many people that saw him. Not just the apostles, but many others. And that there were, uh, in the Luke uh, First Corinthians, it talks about that there were many of them. One uh, said, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ, then is Christ not risen? And then he goes on and he begins to tell all the people that actually saw him and that, that got up that day and Many that saw him, that were able to see him, uh, that all that day of resurrection, and you'll be coming again. Now, let me hurry, and I want to give you one other point. And these are the truths concerning saint, the saints, as saints. We are number one sons in his family over in the book of 1 John. In fact, I'm just going to give you the scripture and you can read this at home. 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. We find that we're sons in the family. Those, that's those of us that are, that's an important truth. And not only that, but over in Psalms 100 in verse number 3, we are sheep in his fold. The word of God tells us this. Truths concerning the saints. And then truths concerning servants in the field in Matthew 21 and verse number 28. And if you allow me to give you one other thing. In case somebody's listening that we don't know and uh, that they may be in this condition, but I want to give you some truths about the sinner. Did you know you don't have to stay in that state as a sinner? You can be forgiven. Uh, the truths concerning the sinner, his condition as a sinner, as, as a sinner, every sinner has three things. Number one, he has a deceitful heart. Look in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse number 11. He has a deceitful heart. Number two, he has a darkened mind. 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 4 and 4. He has a darkened mind. And then, every sinner, every sinner has a dying body. 1 Corinthians 15, 21. Every sinner. Now you say, well, what, what are we? We're saved. Are we, going to, are we going to die? Yes, unless the rapture comes first. We are. But there's a difference. There's a difference. 
In the Old Testament, they put it like this. In the Old Testament, those Old Testament saints had two births and one death, or one birth and two deaths. If you were a believer in the Old Testament, you had two births. You had a physical birth and a spiritual birth and one death. But if you were an unbeliever in the Old Testament, you had one birth and two deaths. You had a spiritual death. Not only a physical one, but a spiritual one. A dying body. All, all, of, the, all of our bodies. Listen, folks. Th these old bodies... If, unless the Lord comes first, they're going to die. We're going to die. But I'm glad <clears throat> over 52 years ago, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. <clears throat> I may die, but I want you to know that heaven is my home. Because I have put my faith, not because I've been a good guy, because I put my faith in what Christ did for me on the cross. Same thing for you. Now, <clears throat> we could go on and go on and go on. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. But I, I tell you, folks, there's some things that are important. I know some of the work, things we think of in this world, it's important that we have a job. That is important. But it better, it's better to not have a job and be right with God than to have a job and be lost. There's some things that are important enough that we contend. We fight for it. Contending for. It's worth contending for. In God's word. Let me say this to us this morning. I, I want you to Thank the Lord for what He's done for you. And if you're here, if you're outside or here or listening, ever how you're listening to the Word of God, if God's convicted you and you need to give your heart and life to the Lord, it's very simple. Just just tell God you're a sinner, and really mean this now. Just tell Him you're a sinner. Tell Him that you have sinned and you're a sinner and. And just ask him to come into your life. Tell him that you want him, ask him to be your savior. Believe that by faith. Believe it. And then confess that. Tell somebody about it today. If you accept Christ, call somebody up and tell them. You know, I, I heard this, I heard this old guy preaching. And I took him at, at the word, at God's word, and I told him I was a sinner. I told God I was a sinner, and I asked him to forgive me. And I, I took him at his word, and I believe him. And I'm, I'm saved today. I'm, I've changed. I, I'm saved. There's something different about me. And I'll tell you, it'll change your life. It'll give you a new sense of what's important. What's really important in life. Don't forget our evening service at 6 o'clock and our Wednesday night service will be broadcast live via Facebook. Uh, Facebook, so don't forget that. One other thing I want to do. I'll tell you, when you see Miss Gail, congratulate her. 
Kurt, she and I have been married 50 years today. Congratulations. 50 years today. So we're having a COVID 50. <laughs> By that, we mean we can't have nobody, no friends, no nobody to come. <laughs> but we're grateful. You know what? And for 50, 50 years ago today, on this, on Sunday, to the day, we stood at Fellowship Baptist Church in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And uh, I was as nervous as a cat. And we took our vows. <laughs> and uh, thank the Lord. Uh, she's uh, put up with me for that many years. Tell her congratulations. Thank you, and may God richly bless you today.